Well, let, let's talk about some of those. Like again, and, and again, like moving in different places, you know, throughout the U.S., it can mean a lot of different things. And so it's like you're growing up. Um, you know, were there one or two memories that really stand out around, you know, uh, resilience in particular, since you highlighted that? Yeah, um, absolutely. So you have to picture this. I have to roll you back in time. It's now the 1960s. 1960s yeah. was, was a very racially charged time, right? A lot going on. I mean, not just racial, Vietnam War, right? Yeah. The sexual revolution, all kinds of things were going on. Um, but for as many people that wanted civil rights and thought, we should have them. You had just as many that didn't. So with that backdrop, my father comes home and tells us that we're going to be moving to a place in Los Angeles. Um, we're now in Philadelphia. I mean, the heart of Philadelphia. In my school, I didn't even realize that I was different because the whole school was a whole bunch of different looking people, right? We were right. all people. Well, we moved from there to a far flung suburb of LA where not only was I the only black person in my class, but in the grade and maybe in the school. Wow. And it was uh, challenging is probably the, the easiest way of putting it. I mean, I had to walk to school every day along a very busy street for a stretch of it. And people would yell horrific things at me. Now you have to understand, I'm in first grade. I moved there in first yes. grade. So I'm this little girl walking with her book bag, you know, and her lunch box, because back then you carried lunch boxes. Um, and people would yell things, go back to the jungle, jungle nigger girl, right? What are you doing here, little black thing? I mean, terrible things. That's me. Wow. And then you get to school and the kids aren't always much better, you know? Um, and I got, I was beaten up by kids in my own class walking home from school. I mean, it was just, it was just not a good thing. But with that backdrop, you know, you come home and things happen to you and you tell your mom, 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 it's not fair. Such and such happened. Such and such did something, right? Whatever it was, not fair. And her response was always the same. It was, Shelly, life's not fair. What? I mean, as a kid, life is fair. You get a lollipop, I get a lollipop, right? I mean, it's supposed to be fair. Now, she was really clear. Life's not fair. So what are we going to do about it? Right? It's kind of like, oh. Okay. And then the other thing she would say when things happened was you can't control what people say to you and you can't control what people do to you, but you can control how you respond. So don't let them win. And her don't let them win was all about don't let them affect how you feel about yourself. Because if they affect how you feel about yourself, then they've won. The rest of it, it's just words. It's just actions. It doesn't yeah. matter. Right? So that, those were kind of the tools that my parents gave me in terms of how to combat the really challenging environment that I was in. And that was, and that really laid the found work for a lot of, found foundation, if you will, for a lot of the resilience that I had. Because what I learned was, okay, life's not fair, so don't go looking for fairness. And it's up to me if I'm going to do something, survive this, overcome it, whatever it is, or not. So that was, that was probably the, definitely the biggest impact was that particular move.